Hey guys, it's Tara here with another video for you. This time, it's not a music video. So as many of you know, I'm a medical student and I've been getting a lot of questions about how I got into medical school, what medical school is like. So this is gonna be a little series just of videos just about med school. Watch them if you like, watch them if you don't like. The first question I'm gonna tackle is why I decided to be a doctor. Um, and for me, it came down to I was working in healthcare as a music therapist and I realized that I wanted to do more as a healthcare professional than I could do as a music therapist. So it's a very particular set of skills that someone has to have in order to be a music therapist, but I realized that there was so much more that I wanted to do and so much more that I knew I was capable of doing. That kind of helped to push me to go on this journey to become a doctor. And you know, it's not something that I could ask my family and friends about. I have very few people in my life who've gone to medical school, like no one in my family um, has ever gone to medical school or become a doctor or in a healthcare profession. All of my, all of my family members work in like accounting or early childhood education, engineering. So none of them really had any experience with applying to medical school. So then the other interesting thing was my bachelor's degree is a bachelor's of music, um, which is great for being a music therapist, not so great for applying to medical school. A lot of medical schools won't even look at your application if you don't have a particular degree, like a pure science degree. So that started to limit my options. And I wanted to apply in Canada, and then I wanted to apply somewhere abroad because I knew that you know, I loved to travel, I loved being an international student when I went to school in the States, so I wanted to maybe explore that kind of experience more. And that's where, like, my research into Ireland came into play. Ireland has a really great reputation with Canadian residency programs and American residency programs for accepting North American students and helping them get back to North America. I applied to Canadian schools knowing it would be a long shot. One, there's not a lot of schools that would accept my previous degree. And then two, Canadian medical schools are notoriously hard to get into. So I applied to, I think, six different programs and I tried to put my best foot forward and unfortunately I didn't get any interviews. And I remember one of the letters was like, Thank you so much for applying. Um, we received 5,000 applications for 500 interview spots and you have not been selected. And I was like, Jeez. I knew it was really hard to get into Canadian medical school, but I don't think until that moment I realized quite how hard it was going to be. So then when I applied to Ireland shortly after, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to get any interviews or I was going to get in anywhere uh, just because of the experience I had with the Canadian application process. I applied through the Atlantic Bridge Program, so North Americans apply to Irish medical schools through the Atlantic Bridge Program. The, they have really great application instructions online. If you're interested, I'll put it in the description box below. I sent in applications for um, most all of the major medical schools in Ireland that had graduate programs. So I sent in my application in November, and then in February I got a email from uh, the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, or RCSI, saying that I had been invited for an interview in Toronto, which I was completely floored by. I think I jumped up and down, I started screaming, I called my mom, my mom started screaming. It was, it was fantastic. So then I kind of, I made my plans, I practiced interviewing for hours, hours with my dad, and he would ask me these, oh, horrible, horrible interview questions. Jeez, dad, these are, these are hardcore questions, but I'm actually really thankful he did that because it meant that, you know, I was prepared for any hard question they were going to throw my way. And then when I actually got into the interview, it was so, so relaxed. The interview was really just a conversation about like why I wanted to come to RCSI and um, all of the kind of different things that I'd done up until that point, how my life experience had prepared me for medical school, and they asked me quite a few questions about like my music background, just because it's kind of, it's a kind of unusual. And I felt good when I left the interview, but I wasn't getting my hopes up, and they told me I should hear back in about two weeks. And um, so I did my interview on a Thursday, and on 
Monday, I got the email saying that I had been accepted to the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. So I texted my mom saying, Mom, I just got accepted to RCSI and forward her, forwarded her the email. I didn't have any research experience. I had loads of volunteer experience. One of the things you need to apply to medical school, basically anywhere, is this test called the MCAT. And it's, it's a hard test. I was working full time when I was studying for it. I think I started to study for the MCAT in April and I was sitting my test in September. It was the first week of, yeah, September 2nd, 2017 is when I sat my MCAT. It's a tough exam. It's a really tough exam. It's four sections, 90 minutes a section, and you get like breaks in, in between of each of the sections. And I just, like there was one section that I felt really comfortable with because it was, it was all critical reasoning. There was nothing really that you could study material wise for it, but it was all of the background science knowledge that I needed to catch up on that things that other test takers had two to four years to learn, I had six months to learn. So I had a really great conversation with um, one of the people who came to our music therapy center. There was this great gentleman who came to our center who was in his early 90s. We bonded initially because we were both Canadian living in Texas. I told him I was thinking about applying to medical school, but I didn't know because I was on the fence and there was this really hard test that I had to take and I didn't know if I'd be ready for it. And his whole attitude, I still remember this conversation, he was just like, just do it. Like the worst thing they're gonna say is no. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you fail. And that's not really a bad thing because you've learned something. And I'm like, geez. I mean, he was just so right. I, I was so paralyzed by the thought of what could go wrong instead of just doing it. And that conversation has stuck with me for things outside of my medical school application. I just have to do it and get it out of the way. That's kind of what the first the first week of my first week of medical school was like, but that's a whole, that's a different video that I'll also be doing on this series is kind of what my, what my first year was like. And I'll probably be doing like a day in the life or what's in my, what's in my medical school backpack, what books I use, different things like that. You'll still get plenty of music content every single Sunday. I post new music covers every single Sunday. Anyway, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you liked it, please click the like button if you want to catch more content from me, so more music videos, more med videos, please click the subscribe button. You guys have been giving me more feedback in my other videos and I love it. It helps me to make things better on my channel. I'm still pretty new to this whole modern YouTube thing. The more feedback I get from you guys, the better videos I can make and the more that we can kind of communicate together. And I love talking to you guys in the comments. Or like some people have sent me emails. I'm really like responsive to that. So thank you so much for watching this video and uh, bye for now.